order. And our first order of business will be hearing the um, substitute to House Bill 41 presented by Chairman Willard. If you will, please come present your bill and explain any changes that were made. And if you will, please um, help the committee, full committee, understand where we are with this bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, before the subcommittee, we had a long discussion and uh, they dealt with the issues about the purpose of the bill, why is this necessary. It, it applies, first of all, there's been, I know, a number of communities around the state thinking that it may apply to them. Initially, it could have, but we narrowed the scope of the bill substantially in that we recognize this language that is being changed starting on line 22 of the bill only applies to those jurisdictions that are created as cities or counties after January 1, 2000. So it only applies really to what will be seven current new municipalities. Even to condense it down further, it's primarily applying, to my knowledge, to one jurisdiction, and that's the city of Sandy Springs, Georgia, which I partially represent. The problem is the city of Sandy Springs, as a government, has no say-so, no right of negotiation, no way of addressing what is being done of the supply of water within its jurisdiction. When Sandy Springs was created in Jan uh, December 1, 2005, the water supply to the city of Sandy Springs comes at that time and since then from the city of Atlanta. city of Atlanta supplied to unincorporated area of Fulton County prior to incorporation. To my knowledge, there has never been an agreement between City of Atlanta and Fulton County, and now there's no agreement between City of Atlanta and the City of Sandy Springs. There's a constitutional provision, ladies and gentlemen, under the Home Rule provision which authorizes the delivery of services outside the jurisdiction of one government into the other geographical area, for instance, a county to within the corporate limits of a city or the corporate limits of a city going outside its limits into the county or into another city. But the proviso is that there has to be an agreement entered into between those governments for the, that service to be provided. That is a constitutional mandate. It's under Article 9. I can't remember the specific language. I had it written down before when I gave it to the committee members. I didn't bring it today, coming straight from my committee member meeting, but <clears throat> there, is, there is that absolute. It's not a maybe, it's, it is absolute. So Sandy Springs has, over the years, wanted to sit down and work out an agreement with Fulton County, I mean with the City of Atlanta, regarding this water supply and the response we receive from Atlanta is no, we're not going to talk to you, we're not going to deal with you, we're not going to negotiate with you, and we're certainly not going to enter into an agreement with you. And we say that's contrary to what the, the constitutional mandate is. In order to, and let me give you a further history, as, as we've started into the negotiations uh, a couple years back of our service delivery strategy agreement, and if you've had any experience working with local governments, every 10 years, <clears throat> the cities and the county in which those cities are located are required by law to enter into this service delivery strategy agreement. And we raised the question, we said we wanted to have some say so regarding our uh, receipt of water into the city of Atlanta, I'm sorry, the Sandy Springs by Atlanta, we want to have a voice into it, they have objected to it, but they not only have objected to it, they sought to bring the city of Sandy Springs into their federal litigation 
uh, which is ongoing from the standpoint of a consent order that's in, in place now in federal court, U.S. District Court, which mandates the city of Atlanta perform certain repairs to their sewer system. And the reason I wanted to bring us in, they claimed, well, well you're, you're going to have an effect upon our, our uh, income production, which may affect the ultimate uh, ability to pay off these bonds and repairs, et cetera. We don't have any control over that. Point being, first district court brought us in. We appealed to the U.S. 11th Circuit Court, and last November the circuit court agreed we were not needed or should not be a party to that litigation and directed the district court to dismiss us, which the court has done. We're now in session, and what I'm seeking to do is ask this committee to approve the bill which I have brought, which only says that for these two governments, I'll read the language, <clears throat> that the, the strategy, that's the service delivery strategy we talk about, shall provide that water and sewer fees charged to customers residing in political subdivisions created after January 1, 2000, located outside the geographic boundaries of a service provider should not be higher than the fees charged to similar customers receiving such service which are located within the geographic boundaries of the service provider unless provided by contract between the service provider and the governing authority for the affected county or municipality outside the geographic boundaries of the service provider. Let me stop there and say why this is the language is currently uh, you've read articles saying City of Atlanta is the highest cost of water in the country at this time because they've had to raise their cost of water delivery, the fees, uh, in order to cover the cost of their sewer system, which was in such a deplorable condition for so long. They've, raised the, they've, they've combined their water and their sewer fees into what they call a common fund called the watershed fund. So they get higher sewer fees, they also increase the cost of their water, and that gives them the benefit of having both fees available for repairs of the sewer. They are not the highest in the country. Sandy Springs is the highest in the country because we pay a 21% premium on the cost of that water above what the residents in the city of Atlanta pay. And that's the, that is the, the chafing problem of it. They won't talk to us, but they want to pay us, charge us rather, a higher rate, and yet we have no say-so about the quality of the service. We have no say-so about repairs that are being made, no say-so about tearing up the streets and making those repairs, uh, no say-so about the quality of the water, anything. So all we're asking is, say, if, you, if you're going to continue serving the water to us, then Without a contract, you should not be allowed to charge a fee greater to us than you charge your own customers. We had a debate about this in uh, subcommittee, and uh, at that time, the uh, civil land came forward with a uh, amendment that they were offered. And that amendment says, provide, however, that in cases where no agreement is reached between the service provider and the affected governing authority, the service provider shall have no obligation to continue to provide water or sewer service to customers of the service provider located within the geographic boundaries of the affected county or municipality outside the geographic boundaries of the service provider. And the service provider may cease providing water or sewer service to such affected county or municipality and shall incur no liability for failure to provide such water or sewer service to the customer residing in the affected county or municipality. So this, this amendment was offered by Atlanta and I accepted it. And the point being that, okay, if they don't wanna, if, if they're feeling that we don't have, they, Atlanta, do not have a level footing and they think we have the only hand, upper hand, to make a determination about what terms of the contract, they would have the ability to say, okay, we're going to cease the service of the water to your city 
and then we have to find another supplier, I guess. But that would be acceptable to us. I think the fairness is Atlanta has not been fair. It's fundamentally fair that we have an agreement worked out or else they have the gun that they can pull on us. But I, I ask the committee's favorable support for uh, House Bill 41. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions from the committee members. Chairman Powell. Mr. Chairman, on uh, the amendment that was offered and, and adopted by subcommittee, and I would in no circumstance suggest that the city of Atlanta might do this, but do you think that there needs to be where it says on uh, line 33, the service provider may cease providing water or sewer, do you think that we need to put in a requirement upon 60 days advance written notice, something to the effect so that you've I got think, some scramble time? I think a reasonable time may be six months. Okay. As a point of time, say, okay, here's, here's the due date, not done, then the clock starts running and something needs to be done within six months. Okay. Um, not that it makes a whole lot of difference if that's going to discontinue. But assuming that you cannot reach an agreement, uh, what would be the rate in effect during that period of time up until? Well, I think it continues as they have it. They have the, there's no agreement. They still have what they're doing now, which is charging this premium. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Taylor. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. My question goes along with, um, what Chairman Powell said, what is your plan? Do you have a backup plan if they come in and say, okay, we're done? How are the residents of Sandy Springs going to get water? Well, we have other jurisdictions around us that we think we could look to with the idea of, of providing water supply if necessary. Have you done any kind of a um, comparison, a study to know what others oh. are doing and what they are charging? I, I did check with my local jurisdiction and how our water is charged in and outside of the um, district. So I, have you done Mr. something? I, have not, I didn't come today to respond as far as a study oh, of cost, okay. of course, uh, but I have in the past seen figures of surrounding jurisdictions and they are substantially lower the than what, what is paid in Sandy Springs. Okay. I say substantial. I'm not saying 10%, 20%. It's more like 45%. Okay, thank you. Any other questions by the committee members? Representative Williamson. J just friendly questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, just trying to understand the process. And j just quick questions. D uh, is the sewer also provided by the city of Atlanta? Well, that's a very good question. Thank you. Our sewer system in Sandy Springs is part of the Fulton County sewer system. We are billed as a part of the bill that comes from Atlanta for sewer, uh, and that is then remitted by City of Atlanta to Fulton County. But that is a different system. Yes, sir. And, and, and when you became a city, did you take ownership of your water pipe, uh, of the, or does the City of Atlanta still we, own we, the physical water system and hydrants and meters That would and probably need that. to be something resolved in court as far as questions of ownership, but it's our contention that we do own the the water lines supply that may have a investment cost that may have to be determined if something didn't did not get worked out but I think that's one of those things would have to face either by negotiations or through litigation yes sir and, 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 and just sort of follow up what, what my concern is and this is a legitimate uh, question mark uh, from for me and again I'm not an attorney but on line 23 it says political subdivisions um, the, the, does, on line 23, political subdivisions, would that include authorities? I'm out in no, Walton, Walton County. We've got a big uh, joint county. We've we got several things point. going on with the Hard Labor Creek, a 1,500-acre reservoir that the governor has funded. I just want to make I'll, perfectly. I'll, I can answer that for you. Okay. This is under the service de delivery strategy law section, and it recognizes political subdivisions as being the county as a district and the cities within that district. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Representative Kidd. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Chairman, are you sure you want to do this, word it this way? I thought a long time, Representative Kidd. I thought a long time, yes, sir. Oh, it seems to me the, like the you're still... The, the council for the city has had discussions with me about it. This is what they desire. And you trust the city of Atlanta? To, to every every step of the way. <laughs> my condolences, Good lady. My condolences, sir. It, it, it looks to me like you'd want it uh, at least a level playing field, but it looks like to me you're still giving them the upper hand, but if this is what you want... Well, it, gives us, it gives us a playing field that we both get on. It's, yeah. I think it's... it's as it says, their request to have that provision on there, if they want to have that, then I'm accepting of it. Mr. number 24, Representative Williamson. Just, Madam Chairman, just a, a quick follow-up question. Again, Chairman Willard, I'm very sympathetic to the plight. I've just got to make sure, because the city of Monroe is due, several of the of us that represent sure. cities, uh, do have the intergovernmental agreements and extended water systems out into sparsely populated areas at you know big expense and there is a disparity in the in what what the citizenry yeah. is charged i just want to make perfectly clear that if, if as long as there's agreements moving forward that they could continue that metric uh, expanded sewer systems or, or yes. water systems and it wouldn't affect these smaller towns it's just no, sir. limited in scope strictly to your situation of sandy springs in atlanta Correct. I say it's, it addresses only political subdivisions created after after January 1, 2000, and those that have been created are only those seven cities. Rep your wave. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions by the committee members? Perfect. All right. What's the pleasure of the committee? Move to pass as amended and seconded, and we're, we're going to state by substitute. By substitute. By substitute yeah. And we're going to state our amendment now. Representative Powell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. On line 33, after the word may, add a comma upon six months written notice comma i make that in the form of motion so that it reads may upon six months written notice cease providing water sewer service does everyone have that craig yes. all right we have a motion for the amendment and a second all in favor of the amendment discussion. any discussion all in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. All right, the amendment Thank passes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, the amendment. That's right, not the bill yet. Excuse yes, sir. Um, and right. at this point, the bill has a, a motion and a second. All in favor of House Bill 41 as amended or by substitute and as amended. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. All right, the bill passes. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations. <laughs> we are going to um, reassign House Bill 455 to the subcommittee, and we're going to have that meeting on Monday morning at 8 a.m., We'll let you know where, but uh, if you're, for those of you who are here and interested in the bill, please uh, join us at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. House Bill 455, and any, uh, any questions or anything else coming before the committee? All right, meeting adjourned.